Today we're going to be replacing the CV shaft on the driver's side on a 2006 Honda Ridgeline. Seriously, I just had it. The tools that you'll need for this project are going to be a 12 millimeter, a 19, a 22 millimeter, two 24 millimeters, and the specialty sockets will be a 36 millimeter and a 33 millimeter or a one and five sixteenths, just in case the new castle nut is a smaller size. You will need various ratchets and big breaker bars, a couple of pry bars, some hammers, a long straight screwdriver, a punch, and potentially you'll need a torch to heat up the castle nut to get it off, and just some penetrating oil just so that you can loosen stuff up a little bit more easily. You're also probably going to want a catch pan of some sort just to catch any excess transmission fluid once you pull the axle out. As you can see, we already have the vehicle lifted up and jack stands underneath. Right here is the axle that we're going to be replacing. So you need to disconnect a few things in order to gain access to that in order to kind of wiggle it out. The first thing you want to do is take a punch and a hammer and unbend this portion of the castle nut away from this dip in the actual axle in order to kind of unlock the castle nut from the, uh, from the axle shaft. Next, using that same punch, you'll put it down into one of the slots of the rotor and you'll just rotate it down into the brake caliper mount. That'll give you the opportunity to lock the rotor in position while you take your 36 millimeter and put it over top and then you'll be able to put pressure down on this in order to break the castle nut loose. As you can see here, I do have a three quarter inch breaker bar to a reducer to half inch because I did end up breaking my half inch breaker bar. So it takes a tremendous amount of force to, to unlock these. I'm actually gonna be putting a breaker bar on this in order to give myself a little bit more extra oomph just to break this guy loose. So if yours is as tight as mine is and you can't get it off and you're about to snap tools, one of the things that you can do is you can hit it with some heat. So I'm gonna hit it with some propane and just heat up the nut really well, break any rusty bonds that it might have, and then I'm gonna try again. Now that I've heated it up for several minutes, I'm going to try this again with the long breaker bar and hopefully this adapter won't break on me. And uh, it did. So that sucks. Well, try some more heat. All right, another several minutes of heat here. Okay, I've been heating this for the equivalent of two tool songs. So let's see if I can't make something happen here. Oh, yes. Oh, victory is freaking mine. Wow. Oh, got him. Careful, that's going to be a little hot. Now, while it's good and hot, you want to give this a good tap with a big hammer. Just to make sure that it's not rusted to the inside. And just give it a little love tap there, push it in to break it loose, and then we can start worrying about disassembling everything else in order to get that the rest of the way out. The next step for me while I'm waiting for this to cool down is just going to be to break these two nuts and bolts loose. So I'm going to take uh, a small breaker bar and a 24 millimeter and put it on this side here and a larger breaker bar with a 24 from this side and I just want to get those broken loose while I'm waiting for things to cool down because if you try to handle this stuff down in through here you'll definitely end up burning your hand so these guys are broken loose and I broke this 12 millimeter loose a little earlier so I'm just going to finish taking it the rest of the way out. Before I remove the two 19 millimeter bolts that hold on the caliper bracket assembly, I'm just going to take and very gently use a breaker bar and sneak it in just behind the brake pad here and just gently pry back just the tiniest bit just to relieve some of the pressure that the caliper will hold into the rotor and that'll make it easier to slide this assembly off. You can also do that using a C-clamp on the back side. Okay, 
cut the bottom 19 out. Now, before you take the top 19 out, you're going to want to make sure that you have some safety wire or a bungee cord or something that you can take this assembly, this brake caliper assembly, and attach it to the upper strut spring so that it keeps it out of your road whenever you're working on the rest of this project. All right, there's the second 19. Just going to set that aside. Now I'm going to take this whole assembly here and just let it rest right up top. I'm going to take this safety wire here or a bungee cord or a string or rope or whatever and I'm going to loop it through this assembly and I'm going to tie it up and out of the way so that I can do the rest of the project without the caliper hardware in my in my road. Now that the brake caliper is out of the way, it gives you plenty of room to remove these 24 millimeter nuts and bolts uh, the rest of the way. After removing the two nuts here, the next thing I did is I put the key in and I cut the wheel the whole way to the left to make things uh, a little bit easier here in just a moment to pull the CV axle out of the hub. Once we remove these two bolts, this assembly will kind of flop forward. You want to give it a little bit of support and then pull this CV axle out. You can push in right here and just kind of wiggle it out from the back side. You will want to keep in mind that you'll need to support all of the, <laughs> the parts that are kind of flopping around whenever you do this. You may or may not need to come in with a pry bar and pry the, this part of the spindle out of the, the bottom side of the strut. And just like that, we're out. So the next thing I'm gonna do is put this guy kind of back together and slide a bolt back in there just so that it can support itself and we're not stretching the heck out of the little speed sensor wire. The next step will be going underneath with an angled pry bar and right in the back side, just underneath the axle here, you want to weasel this up through the subframe on the, the back side and just pry and pop that guy out of there. So I ended up changing my game plan a little bit. I took a long screwdriver, standard, that's a little bit thicker, and you could probably use a chisel for this, but I reached in from the underside and I put it between the housing and I gave it a couple of taps with a hammer just to get the C-clip on the inside to separate. And then I was able to use the angled pry bar to just pop it out the rest of the way. You want to be prepared for a little bit of transmission fluid to leak out, so you'll probably want a cash pan or something underneath. Now we can pull this guy. You're just going to reverse the process to put the new one in. As you do, you want to kind of angle it and make sure that you're not messing up your transmission fluid seal on the inside. So you want to get it good and lined up prior to, you know, giving it any muscle. And once you rotate it a little bit and it clicks and you're lined up, you'll come to the back side and using a brass hammer or a piece of wood and a hammer, you're going to give this a good tap just to get it to seat in there and clip the rest of the way in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put pressure on it this way and I'm just going to give it a good thwack with the hammer here. And you'll kind of hear it click in. And once it does, you won't be, you won't be able to get it back out. The thing to be mindful of is you want to hit this nice and flush so that you're not mushrooming this end out. If you don't have a brass hammer, just be really careful or, you know, have someone give you a hand and hold a piece of wood there so that you can give it a good thwack and, uh, and get it in there without damaging the threads. Now that we have the new axle seated in there, I'm just going to come through and I'm going to clean up any of the excess transmission fluid in this area right here, just to make sure that it's good and clean and I can double check for leaks before I continue reassembling everything else. The next step for me will be to remove this bolt and again being very careful of your vehicle speed sensor wire right here, you'll want to pull this bolt out, separate these two, and then angle this and get it lined up with your bearing and your spindle 
slide that in, and then reassemble this. You can see once you get it lined up, it'll come right through to the outside. Now that I have it close, I'm just going to use my punch to wiggle this guy around and get my bolt started back. And you can use the same trick on the bottom side as well. Now we just need to tighten these two up, get them torqued down, and then we can move our brake caliper assembly back down and prepare for the rest of the installation. One of the more important things to keep in mind when doing this project is your new CV joint might come with a different sized castle nut. So the one that you take off is probably going to be a 36 millimeter, and sometimes these come with a 33-ish millimeter. Uh, you'll need a 1 in 5 16 socket to fit this unless you have a 33 millimeter. Um, good luck finding one of those. I was able to run to the store and grab a 1 in 5 16 which will work for this application. I do not want to reuse this guy because it was a bear to get off and uh, I, I don't want to put an old one onto a new part. So now we can put the new guy on and as we tighten this down we are going to get out our handy dandy punch and put it back into the fins of the rotor so that whenever we do tighten this down it'll stop this assembly from spinning and we can torque this guy down. Now I'm going to rotate the assembly so that this little divot in the inside of the axle is on the top side and then I can actually take a chisel or a punch and I can punch that outer rim of the castle nut and dent it inside of that little indentation on the inside of the axle and what that'll do is prevent this castle nut from ever backing off. It's kind of a, like a lock nut type feature. And there you have it, we're all installed, we are good to go. Gonna put the wheel back on, lower this guy back down. One of the things to keep in mind is you wanna double check your transmission fluid if you did lose a lot of it during the axle removal process. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you learned something and got something out of the video. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future content and we'll see you in the next one.